It's time once again for your update from the city of New Hope. Proud to be talking with the mayor, Kathy Hempkin. Hello, mayor. How are you today? Hi, Dave. What a glorious day. It is wonderful out there. Spring is definitely here, and we've got some springtime notes to start with, talking about yard waste and trash. What better topics to begin? Let's talk about those yards and people probably itching to get out. What's the good news about the site where they can take things shortly here? It's always nice to talk trash, isn't it? Yeah, all right. So the Maple Grove uh, waste site, uh, yard waste site, is open the 1st of April. So you can load up your trailer, your trunk, or the back of your pickup and haul all that out there. It's free. Bring your driver's license with you to prove that you live in New Hope. And then New Hope actually pays part of the cost of that, but there's no cost to the residents. So if you want to get rid of that stuff, that's the place to get rid of it after the first. Very good. And the website there in the bottom of the screen, mgyardwaste.com to find out more about some of the rules there, what you can bring, can't bring, and the hours of operation. All right. Another big event for spring cleanup here is a bulky waste cleanup. Tell us a little bit more about this anticipated event. Oh, that is always anticipated. So this is that curbside pickup. You can put all your stuff on the curb. In fact, today as we're recording this, I was driving back up through New Hope and they were out. They were picking they, stuff up. So it's happening. They were picking up. Well, they'll send you something in the mail so you know when your pickup date is Okay. or around that. So, But get that stuff out there. This is a good way to get rid of all that stuff. You've got a flyer on that that shows what you can and can't throw away. They're limiting it because there was times when there would be a lot more stuff than really came from that house. Mm -hmm. So other people were bringing stuff in. So they're putting limits on what you can actually toss out. So look at the website or look at that flyer and see what you can toss out. Very good. And while we're on the topic of trash, just a couple of friendly reminders about some of those containers at our house. So there's quite a few now. What are some of the rules, regulations, and new hope to keep those in the right spot? So the garbage, the recycle, and the yard waste bins, three of them, all need to be kept in the garage or behind the garage. They can't be seen from the street or they have to be screened in some way. Uh, if they're not, you'll probably get a citation that tells you you have to put them away. So you probably should put them away before you're told you have to put them away. Then you won't get the citation. So let's just keep New Hope looking pretty and get that stuff off the street. Website there as well, newhopemn.gov slash code to find out more about some of the codes that are in effect within the city. Coming up, the Board of Equalization. Tell us a little bit about what this means, why this event happens, and what you expect the interest to be this year. Well, as you know, the price of houses has just gone skyrocketing. So in New Hope, it's gone up uh, 17%, which is huge. So if you get your statement, on the bottom of the statement, there's a phone number you can call. If you don't agree with your market, your estimated market value, uh, you should talk to the Hennepin County Assessor first. Uh, if you're not satisfied with what they say, you can come to the equalization meeting, appeals and equalization. That's on the 14th of April at seven o'clock at City Hall and bring your tax statement with you uh, so that we can have get the right numbers and all that stuff. Okay. But it really benefits you to talk to that County Assessor. And you've got that phone number on your screen. You need to call them and talk to them before you come in. Very good. A couple other updates. We had the firefighters very busy the past week, raising some money and gathering some food for the area food shelves. I understand it went very well. It did. It was a week ago last Saturday. And so the firefighters had some extra help along with their families, stood outside some of the grocery stores with their boots and uh, collected money. They collected $4,770 and about 1,300 pounds, I'm sorry, 1,700 pounds of food. And that should, should do about 11,000 families. So 306 families can go in and get three days supply with the food just from that one event with the firefighters. So thank you West Metro firefighters for that and all the people that donated. Definitely. One other note to pass along in case people are interested in running for city council, but time is coming up once again. What are the dates to remember and how many seats will be up this year? So there'll be two seats up this year. Um, you can file between May 17th and May 31st. It costs $5. You just go in and tell them you want to file for office. They have it so early because uh, we have to have a primary if there's more than twice the number of seats. Okay. So that means if there's more than four people applying, uh, then they have to have a primary to kind of gear it down a bit. So May 17th through the 31st is the time to file and just go in and fill out the form and give them the $5 and 
you can run for public office. Let's move ahead to community development. A lot to talk about here. We've been following the work at Hy-Vee and good news here. It sounds like the work is done and you can order all you want. Is that right? You can at kiosk on the west side of Hy-Vee is finally open. So go online, you can order your groceries and then just, they'll give you time, you zip over, they'll put them in your trunk and off you go. It's really quite convenient. Move on to scattered site housing, a couple properties to update residents on. First is 46th and Aquila. What is the latest on that property? Well, that one's done. And so it's just gone onto MLS listing for $460,000. That's the most expensive uh, scattered, heights, scattered site house we've had thus far. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely beautiful inside. The neighbors are thrilled to have it there. Next house is 53rd in Rhode Island. We've been keeping people up to date here on some of the work happening inside. How's that progress coming? Well, that's the uh, de the deconstruction house. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they, they've put a fence around the whole property. They're going in and they're taking out anything of any value. That means all the appliances. If they can get the tile off the floor, they're taking it, any paneling, any wood that they can take, and then they'll resell that. And then when that's all done, the, the demolition crew will come in and they'll take uh, all the debris that's left plus all the foundation. And then when that's done, we'll go out for a request for, for proposals from builders. Okay. So this is a long process, but in the meantime, we're, we're, I think we're doing the right thing by deconstructing this time. Community development always busy trying to help out businesses in the area. And one way they do that is through the business network group. What's the next meeting? Where will that take place and when? The next one is April 3rd at 8.30 in the morning. It's at 9220 Bass Lake Road at Thrivent. That's in that building. And Fork and Flair, which is a local um, catering company, will do the food for that, that meeting. So there's always a lot of good information on that, if not good food, too. Very good. And just to check on that date, that is April 6th, correct? That is a Wednesday oh. normally. Wednesday, yes, I'm April sorry. 6th. It is a it is April 6th. Very good. One other note to pass along under building permits and inspections. Property on 45th and a half. The city has been keeping an eye on for a while. Give us an update there. They have. That's a property that's on Winnetka, 45th and a half. And there's been a large pile of debris uh, stored outside the house. They've gotten a citation. Uh, they've got an administrative fine. They've gotten twice and nothing has happened. So the city then can abate which means that they can call in a hauler and have all that junk picked up and hauled away. And then they charge it back to the property owner. Okay. So that if that's been cleaned up, but it takes so long because you have to go through all those administrative processes and do it properly before you can actually start charging it back to them. Let's move ahead on our update to public works, remind residents of a few things happening. The first is water main breaks. The number seems to be lessening mayor. So maybe the last one for the winter season. I hope we've only had we only had one this right. last week, so that's a really good thing. The other thing Public Works is doing is is sawing out the catch basins. Okay. I have no idea how one saws out a catch basin, but they do, and I don't have to know. We have an ongoing ash tree problem, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And then this is good news for people: the street sweeping is going to start April 11th, and that'll go on through May 20th. And that's where the sweepers go by with with big brushes and they sweep up all the debris that's in there. And then we hire somebody to actually take the debris away and get rid of it. So we should have a nice clean sparkly city by the 20th of May. Very nice, a couple other signs of seasons changing. They're doing some work on some of the street signs, but also the word is out about potholes and maybe damage from plows. What should residents know, Mayor, if they see some things out and about in the community? So if you have a beloved pothole in front of your house, oh or the snowplow happened to dig up some of your sod, go on to the website. And so it's our website.gov slash report an issue. And so they can just put in where the pothole is, um, you know, give them your address and say it's right outside, right in front of my house. Mm -hmm. And they'll come by and they'll fill it. Now it won't be filled the same day that you call it in. Okay. But they'll, they kind of schedule it and they'll get out. So they do, so they're not just driving helter skelter all over. They'll try to do a whole bunch when they're on. But do report them because we don't know they're there unless you let us know. And even if we happen to, to tear up your lawn by accident, we sometimes don't know we did that. Sure. So let us know that we did and then we'll come out and fix that. 
Another public works update. Their facility is getting some work done. We've been following that throughout the winter. Where are we now on progress? What's happening as we speak? Well, finally, the cement is cured and they're putting the lifts in. And so after those lifts get in, they'll start moving the shelving back and moving all the stuff back in. And, and it'll just look like a normal, clean garage now. That sounds so great. That's ex that's exciting that they're going. Yes, in. they're happy about that. Those that might walk around Meadow Lake, maybe you've been out during some of this nice weather, you might notice water coming back in. So how did the drawdown go and what's the process of getting the lake back? Well, we're not sure how the drawdown went. We'll, okay. we'll know as the water starts filtering back in. But it should have been very successful because there were a few really, really cold days. And that's where we get rid of the, the weeds and the stuff that's growing in there. So it'll start filling back in now that the snow is pretty much melted in the rain. So they, they think about the end of April, early part of May, it should be back to its normal level. I can tell it's getting better because the geese are back. Uh -huh. so that's problem <laughs> number two. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> that will be coming up next. Uh, let's talk a little bit back about forestry. You mentioned the emerald ash borer. What is the city seeing? What is the process that's happening right now in the city that residents should be aware of? Almost all of our ash trees have the bore. And so there are all the boulevard trees have got to come down and the ones in the parks and the public spaces. Well, that takes a lot of time. We don't have the capabilities of doing that as quickly as we'd like. So mm -hmm. we're going out to contractor services to see if we can get some help from them. But of course, they're really busy too. So we're really asking residents to please be patient. Um, we know it's there on the boulevard and it's gonna have to come down. It just may take a long time to get those all down. And of course, if they do take one on your boulevard, you'll be able to replace it with a list that they'll give you of trees that are available. I don't know how much money has been set aside for that, but um, if you know you've got a tree that's coming down, you might wanna call and get your name on that list to get a replacement. Very nice. Let's move ahead to Park and Rec. A lot of activity here, as you might guess, with the seasons changing. The first is, as we record this, we're just after spring break, and I understand those that like the arts were out in full force during spring break. What were they doing? <laughs> well, we have a theater company, and they have they did Peter Pan for the four to seven-year-olds, four to eight-year-olds, I'm sorry. I can imagine how cute that was. Mm -hmm. And then they did Hamilton for the seven to 12 year old. So those are done, but keep looking in your in motion brochure because there's a lot of fun stuff that's coming up. And we'd like people to, to be able to sign up for that stuff when it comes up. All right, and here's what it looks like. You probably saw this in your mail or else you can certainly get them at City Hall. You'll also find maybe information there about people playing in the mud, Mayor. Why are people playing in the mud and maybe looking to do it again? <laughs> well, they're little people, not okay. big people. Okay, that's and they good. Call it young, they call it young mudders. And what they did is they uh, got volunteers last year for this young mudders event, and they contacted them to see if they wanted to volunteer again. Okay. They basically fill up mud pits, and the kids play in the mud. And then they get them out of the mud, and they hose them down, and they send them home. So it's really a fun event. The kids just love it. So young get mothers. Have if, some fun in the mud. Why not? <laughs> and if you want to volunteer, we'd love to have you. Sounds good. We've talked a little bit in the past weeks about the safety camp and have a great partner helping out in that. So I understand maybe still a few more spots. And also it sounds like they're looking for presenters to maybe help out that at that event. Tell us about that. They are. Well, because Affinity uh, Plus has it's a credit union they have paid for 75 campers to go to camp so safety camp is free to the campers this year there's a few empty spots yet if you haven't signed up you need to do that right away quick because okay. this comes up really fast and it'll fill up real fast so we're looking for vendors who may want to donate uh, like frankie's pizza will donate pizzas and we have hot dogs oh. that are coming and so we need people to serve the kids lunch and a snack afterwards and we also need presenters. So if you've okay. got a, something that you're really interested in, you think the kids might be interested, that's a safety issue, uh, contact our Park and Rec Department and they'll guide you in the right direction to help. Find that information through the website, newhopemn.gov. Let's talk about jobs for the summer as well. The city is still looking for some employees to help out in what areas? All the areas. So okay. of course we're looking for, we're looking for the parks and for the, uh, the people that work at the little park buildings to help with the summer programs. We're also looking for people at the golf course. We're looking for people at the pool. So if you want to apply, you better do it real quick because they're doing the interviews right now. 
Okay. And we'll fill those jobs up pretty quickly because it's a fun place, fun place to work in the summer. Good to know. Let's talk about softball. How are things going with the sign-up process here? I understand teams are just flowing in. They are. So the, the right now they're signing up the men's softball. They have, they're so excited. They've got 19 women's softball teams signed up. Right. So there'll be two leagues going on. And of course they play in New Hope at our field. And, and those games are always free to go watch. A lot of people just go from park to park and watch the, the folks play softball. So it's really fun to do that. If you've got a team you want to play, you need to call Park and Rec and okay. they'll get you signed up. Very good. Let's talk about the golf course. Everyone that drives by on Bass Lake Road peeking over to see, is it open? Is it open? Not quite yet, but they're busy there. What are they doing not, behind the scenes? Not quite yet. So they're doing registration for leagues and for uh, lessons. They're also renting out that back pavilion or that back patio now. So that'll fill up quick with graduations coming. They tell me that uh, the 18th of April, they'll open up for a league. Uh, they'll open sooner if it's possible. And okay. what makes it possible is those greens have to dry out because mm -hmm. they don't want people walking on them. They probably are the first early part. You won't be able to rent a cart. You'll probably have to walk okay. because there's are some low spots and they stay pretty wet. And of course, if you put the carts out there, they start really ruining the grass. So sure. the, there's lots of busy noise going on over there. They're taking down trees and they're hauling stuff out and they're just trying. And they scooped up the manure. Okay. So that's, that's gone. That's gone too. So very they nice. Be opening, they'll be opening pretty quickly now. The season is coming soon. And let's hop over to the ice arena. It sounds like things are wrapping up there for the season. And one great way was with the skating show last week was a big hit. Oh, it was a big hit. It was last week. And and there were, I think, nine performances. They were just fun to watch, really fun. So the, the ice rink now is closed to the public as of today. Mm -hmm. And the outside rinks are closed too. So if you're a, a recreational skater, you might want to just hang up your skates for the summer because <laughs> right. I think you're done. Yep. But the, the leagues are still playing. The men's league is playing. And there's an elite league that's still playing. And, of course, pretty soon they'll, they'll open up the... Uh, the training part of it. Okay. They're going to take out the ice on the north rink. And if you've never seen that, that's really kind of fun to, to see. They'll start taking that out this week. And it takes a few days to get it out. And then they'll repair and repaint and get it all ready, change the dashboards, and we'll be ready to go in the spring or the fall. All right. Some people may be a little sad that the skating season is done, but they're very happy that the swimming season is coming soon. We've got the phone number on the bottom of the screen to call for Park and Rec, 763-531-5151, or again, the city's website, great place to go to find out a couple things related to the pool. Understand here, we've got some jobs. We also have season passes. Give us the latest on the pool. Thank you. Well, the season passes are $60 if you buy them before the 3rd of June. After that, the price goes up. So you can call that phone number, you can do it online, or you can do it over the phone. Of course, they'll take a credit card. Uh, the pool should be a big hit again this year like it was last year. And I think they're still looking for people. So if you're still interested in, in signing up to work, now's the time. All right. The city's website, again, place to find out all that information that we covered today, newhopemn.gov. Mayor, thanks once again for your time. And we look forward to the update again next week. And the mayor will be in an undisclosed location. We're going to try to <laughs> push technology here to see if we can get the mayor. So Join us next week to find out more. Thanks, Mayor. Have a good day. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.